It's really easy to forget how much companies like Meta contribute to FOSS, especially projects like the Linux kernel. Now, to be fair, it's financially in the best interest to do so, but they do it nonetheless. And one of those developers involved in doing so is Paul McKenney, who was a kernel developer at IBM before eventually moving to Meta. And he's been involved in kernel development for over 20 years. And a while back, put together this series of blog posts about how to get involved in the Linux kernel, the first of which being joining the Linux community the easy way. First up, what is the Linux kernel community? Let's start with what the Linux kernel community is not. It is not a strict hierarchy. Linus almost never asks anyone to contribute to kernel development. Instead, he usually limits himself to rejecting submissions and making suggestions, and it is not a group of managers. Now, if you go and read the mailing list, you'll see there are certainly a lot of people that have respect for those lead maintainers, like Greg Crower Hartman, like Linus Torvalds, and all of those other amazing people involved in the kernel. But this is something that has naturally developed over the years by showing they are competent in that position. Unless there is a bug in your commit, they're not going to say, okay, you have to work on this, you have to work on that. This team get together and go work on this thing. They might say, oh, it wouldn't it be nice if this edition was made as well? Maybe someone wants to do this. But that's entirely optional. Obviously, you don't want to just go and annoy the people who'd be merging your commits, but it's a very loose hierarchy. And in that same vein, they are not waiting for non-members of the Linux community to tell it what to do. Sure, you can have your opinion, but if you're not involved in the kernel whatsoever, your opinion doesn't really mean that much. If you want something to change, get involved or pay someone to get involved and go and do it. And they're not necessarily a group that will invest large amounts of time in educating aspiring contributors. Now, obviously, there is individual variation. Individual developers, individual subsystem maintainers might be more willing to bring new people in than others. But as a general rule, it shouldn't be expected. If you want to get involved in Linux kernel development, you should be an experienced developer. Don't go to the kernel if you've never written a single line of C. Understand how Git works, understand what a main list is, how to use one. Learn all this stuff, getting involved in other FOSS projects, whether it's your own or someone else's. But the first project you get involved with probably shouldn't be the Linux kernel. You can do it, there is a lot of documentation out there, but don't expect to be guided along every step of the way. And they are not a group that gives priority to what aspiring contributors want. A great example of this is the Rust commits. When they were first brought up for RFC, they were basically torn apart. Linus was involved in this, and there was a giant rant. I did a video on this at the time, basically saying that this was all terrible in its current state. Why would you ever think that this was a good idea to bring to the kernel? But nowadays, Rust has been merged. Like, the... the First stuff for Rust has been merged. It's gotten better. So it didn't matter that at the time they wanted it merged. It had to be in a good enough state for the kernel. And it is not a group that knows about aspiring contributors' backgrounds and skills. It doesn't matter that you're a 30-year senior software engineer. If the work you make is bad, the work you make is bad. And if some junior developer at some like startup brings this commit in and it's really good, that work might be merged. Instead, the Linux kernel community is a group that has come together, more or less anyway, to develop software to solve specific problems and with substantial success. If you think of the community as a standards committee that produces source code rather than English prose, you won't go too far wrong. In particular, working with the community is as much about working with people as it is about working with code. As I said, you probably don't want to annoy people like Torvalds if you ever want your code to actually be merged. But this is also evidenced by the fact that different subsystems are run by different maintainers. Linus tends to just let them go off and do their own thing and then eventually bring their code up. But this does mean that different subsystems might be run in very different ways. You might have a maintainer of that subsystem, which is very lenient with code mistakes. And like, oh, okay, you made a mistake. Well, I'll help you fix this. Or, hey, go and fix this back up and then come back with a better version and then we'll merge it back up. 
or you might have someone else who's like, no, this code has to be good right now or I'm never dealing with you again. But what this does mean is while the lack of homogeneity can be irritating at times, on the other hand, it means that if you had a terrible experience with one subsystem, you could try another. Even though there isn't a strict hierarchy, there is some responsibility that comes from being a subsystem maintainer. So let's say some developer sends in a patch set and that patch set has a bug or has some formatting issue or something else that's wrong with it that probably should be dealt with before it finally gets merged into Linus's tree. And let's say the subsystem maintainer doesn't notice the problem either. Who takes the heat from Linus when Linus goes to merge it? The answer is that subsystem maintainer does. This means that each maintainer has full responsibility for quality control for their subsystem. This differs from the common practice of placing quality control responsibilities on a separate group. This is usually what's done in, you know, big companies. This difference is not at all subtle. As a developer, you will have far less power over a maintainer than you would over a separate quality control group. This situation can come as a bit of a shock to developers accustomed to quality control groups. Someone has to fix it. If that developer has just disappeared, maybe the maintainer will just eject the code and not deal with it. Maybe they'll go and fix it themselves if it's something really, really useful. But at the end, someone's got to fix that code. Otherwise, the maintainer is getting some angry emails from Linus. It does not matter how you feel about the code. If it's buggy, it's buggy. And if it's buggy, it needs to be fixed or it's gone and we are not going to deal with it. Linus has gone on record stating that his Linux kernel goals were achieved in the early 1990s. While he does occasionally make suggestions, usually in the context of like an existing patch set and ways it could be improved, his main goal is maintaining the full kernel. This means that he is accepting patches to help the Linux kernel achieve the goals of others or rejecting patches that interfere with users, though he works hard to get his maintainers to say no on his behalf. So one could argue that Linus is in fact waiting for contributors to tell him what to do, at least in response to any patches that they convince maintainers to accept. As I said, the subsystem maintainers should be there to weed out the garbage and then leave Linus with the tens of thousands of good commits, which is still a lot of commits to deal with, but it's less than otherwise would be there. Most maintainers are quite busy and are not waiting for tasks from contributors. In fact, it can sometimes take considerable time, effort, and creativity to convince them to accept the patches the contributors put so much work into. By the same token, maintainers are not waiting for contributors manager to tell them what to do. If you want to get your patch accepted into the kernel, learn how to explain the thing you're doing and learn how to explain it in a way that other people can understand. What to expect. We hope the developers get a smooth entry into the Linux kernel community. However, this is one of those things that is much easier if developers start by assuming that it is going to be hard. Assume that everything is going to suck and it's probably not going to suck as much. Therefore, developers should avoid assuming the Linux kernel community will appreciate their skills, invest in their education, or give priority to knowing their background, and sometimes your background might not be relevant or useful to your contributions to the Linux community. The most important thing is to build sufficient trust that the maintainer will accept patches. This requires the two C's, character and competence. Be a good person and make good code and it's probably going to be a much smoother experience. So what should you do to be successful? Firstly, leverage your related experience. Say you're a systems admin, a system D developer. Maybe you're a large project closely involved with the kernel. Maybe you've been just digging around the kernel, just seeing how everything pieces together and you're just doing it for fun. Whilst not being, you know, directly related to writing kernel code for the kernel, it can give you a head start and give you some idea about how to get involved in a project like this. It doesn't mean that you can't start from zero, but having some related experience is obviously going to help. 
do your homework, watch conferences, read the mailing list, find out what's actually being worked on and what other people are excited about. Are there similar proposals to what you're considering doing? How did they go? Is yours different? Is yours better? Is yours maybe an extension of what they were already doing? Make sure you read the submission guidelines. Don't waste people's time with poorly formatted code. At least at a bare minimum, make sure it aligns with the formatting guide. The bugs are a separate thing. Try to, you know, get rid of those as well. But if you can't follow a formatting guide, you shouldn't even be getting involved. If there is some reason you need to break one of the rules, make sure you justify it in a way that can be understood by other maintainers. Nobody cares about your personal preference about how code should be written give them the benefit of the doubt. All too often, when we see a maintainer rejecting our proposal or something like it, it is common for us to assume that it is maintainer's mistake. This is unproductive behavior to say the least. In fact, if they've been working on their project for some time, it is safe to assume they understand it much better than we do. It's very easy to assume that because they don't like the thing that you like, therefore they just don't understand it. It's very possible that they've already considered that as a possibility and they're like, no, we're not doing that. Or maybe you've just explained it really badly and it makes sense that they completely misunderstood what you're trying to do. Maybe they understand an issue your patch introduces that you never expected. Because remember, the Linux kernel doesn't just run on x86 systems. It has this massive array of supported hardware and maybe they have one of those devices, they test your code on it, and it introduced some regression that you never even realized. And finally, be a valuable member. You are nobody. It doesn't matter if you have a Wikipedia page and it has all of your publications and all of the projects you've worked on and all of this stuff, just assume that nobody has any idea about any of that. You are going to be judged purely on the work you do. Aim to provide good contributions and be a valuable member of the kernel. But this is all of the general stuff about getting involved in the kernel community. The next challenge is getting your fix accepted. This can work a bit differently in the Linux kernel than elsewhere. We will cover that in another blog post. Stay tuned. I had originally planned to do this video around the time the blog post came out. Um, but I was waiting for part two to come out. And part two took just a teensy wincy bit of time. This website's really slow. Uh, it came out last month. So I have to do a video on this one as well. So are you a kernel contributor? Have you been involved in the kernel in the past? Are you a kernel maintainer? I would love to know, and I would love to know your insights in the comment section down below. Is anything in here misrepresented? Do you think this blog does a really bad job, a really good job? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And don't anger Torvalds because he will probably scream at you. At least that's what old Torvalds would do. Hey,